hello and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are doing good so today in this video we'll learn how to implement looping in a process model in appian which basically allows you to repeat a set of activities based on certain conditions okay so without wasting further more time let's get right into the video all right let's create a process model go to new choose the type of object you want to create from the designer menu so we want a process model just click on process model give it some meaningful name like my process model is gonna be used for looping so i'll just name it as as loop as loop i think that would be enough if your process model is gonna be used for writing data to a table writing student data to a table then you can name it like as add student details or edit student details something like that okay then we have this description you just have to provide a short description to have a common understanding of the object and its functionality okay so in my case it's gonna be like process to be used for implementing a loop keep it short and simple okay empty is missing with that hit create button security is already in place so i'm good to save this okay so we have this start node and end node and on the left hand side of yours you can see a palette just drag and drop any activity you need from the palette onto your process model canvas okay so we need a script task okay which should be properly chained between the nodes okay as you can see this is not properly chained and how would you know that you just have to click on this chain okay and you can see this it's a straight line this start node is not connecting to this script task and this script task is not connecting to this end node okay so you just have to keep it moving around the chain until and unless you see that blue highlighted chain and as soon as you see this blue line you just have to drop the activity okay and now you can see the nodes are properly chained okay it's not a single yellow straight line but two lines connecting the nodes to each other okay now next what we have to do will create a counter variable which will be used to keep track of the number of times this process model is executed okay you just have to go to properties then head on to this tab called variables okay click on add variable and name your variable as counter and this should be of number integer type right number integer cool next i will need a smart service called write to data store entity okay i'll just type in the name write to data store entity which i will be using for writing the data to a table okay so let me just go back to designer and show you guys the table which i have just created this is a cdt as looping table where i have just two fields one of them is just my primary id and the second column is counter id okay which is of integer type cool so i will be writing my data of each iteration to this table cool so here is my write to data store entity let's configure this first in order to configure this you should either double click this smart service or just right click and then go to properties okay then head on to this tab called data under inputs tab of your data you can see a data store entity you just have to map it with the same data store entity which uses this cdt as looping table okay so i have already created a constant of type data store entity which points to the same cdt okay i'll go back to my process model and pass the same constant over here using cons domain cons as dsc looping table okay save and close 
button you will need to create a new node input which uses the same CDT as your data store entity uses okay so I'll just name it as looping okay looping and the type should be of CDT type as I just said it should be of same type as my data store entity okay so as looping table value is nothing but what I want to write to my table okay so first of all I'll create a process variable for that add variable I'll name it as same looping this should be of my CDT type AS looping table okay and I'm good to go go back to your smart service by double clicking on that head on to your data tab okay and then you just have to map this with the variable you have just created okay you can access it by clicking on this down arrow you are able to see it because the type of this variable is same as the type of your new node input okay just have to click this and you are good to go okay now we have to set the data so for setting up the data you will be using a script task just double click on this head on to this data tab okay so we have these two tabs under data tab inputs and outputs this input tab specifies the data our script task is gonna receive as input and it can only be used within our script task okay and this output tab specifies the data that a script task is gonna produce as output okay and these outputs can be used outside your script task so we will be creating a new custom output by clicking on new custom output and in here we just have to set the data for this column right for counter id so i will be writing the same what we have in a counter variable to the counter id okay counter just click here counter save and close to select the target you just have to map it with this counter id looping and then counter id okay now we have already set the data cool our next step is to increment a counter variable okay what i'll do i'll just move these activities a bit on the left side okay and then i will have to increment my counter variable okay i'll need another script task for that just chain it properly and then double click okay go to your data tab outputs create a new custom output you just have to increment your counter variable right so select your counter variable and add one to this okay which will be saved as counter variable in the target you just have to pass the same variable because let's say if your counter variable is one 1 plus 1 becomes 2 then the new counter value will be saved as 2 okay and we are not going to run this for infinite times which needs to be handled using XOR gateway to stop the execution of this process model okay I'll create another process variable to define the number of times we are going to run this loop okay so add variable uh, let's name it as times okay it should be number integer I want this process model to be run for five times so I'll just define my value over here as five okay now we also have to configure this XOR which will decide the path to enter okay new condition so when are we going to stop the execution of this process model when the value of our counter variable is greater than times right that's when it should stop okay so just click this times is greater than or equal to the value of counter variable cool we have already defined the value of pv times that is 5 we have hard coded it right 5 and let's say the value of pv counter is 2 so 5 is greater than equals to 2 that's true right it's gonna go back to the script task to write the data to the table now let's say 
the value of PV counter is 6. We are incrementing it right before the path enters this XOR. We have this script task in place which increments the value of PV counter. So now the value of PV counter becomes 6 and the value of PV times remains same. And that is 5. So 5 is greater than or equals to 6. Here the condition becomes false and it is gonna exit the path and stop the execution of this process model. Okay. So let's save and close. As long as the value of PV times is greater than the value of PV counter, it should go back and write the data to that table. Go to the properties, head on to this tab decision. Okay. As I just said, as long as the PV times is greater than PV counter, it's gonna go back to the script task. Else it has to exit the XOR okay go to end node and stop the execution cool let me just activity chain the nodes and then we will be good to go let me just set the default value of our counter because the value of our counter variable is zero it has no value that means it's zero as it is a number integer I don't want zero to be written to my table okay by default it will be zero if I just set this to 1, okay, it's gonna avoid 0. So what happens here? See, in this script task, I'm just setting up my data that needs to be written to my table, okay? So I'm writing the same value of my PV counter to my looping table as my counter ID, okay? And then the same is being passed over here, okay? it's gonna write the same value to this table okay as you can see here we are passing the same process variable pv looping okay and then it goes here and increments the value of counter variable by one the current value of pv counter is one one plus one becomes two and the two will be stored as my new value of my counter variable okay now then it enters this XOR gateway and decide the path to take. So here the value of PV times which is hard coded as 5, 5 is greater than equals to PV counter 2. That's true. It's gonna go back to the script task. Okay. The value of my PV counter is 2 now and it's gonna go back here and then it is setting up the data to be written to that table. Okay. Now it's going to write the, the new value of my PV counter that is 2, 2 to this looping dot counter ID. And then it comes here and again increment the value of PV counter by 1. Now the value of PV counter is 2, 2 plus 1 becomes 3. Okay, it becomes 3. Now it enters the XOR gateway and decides a path to take. The value of PV times is 5, that's static, and the value of PV counter is 3. So is 5 greater than or equals to 3? True. It's gonna go back to the script task and it is gonna continue to do so till the value of PV counter becomes 6. Okay. Let's say the value of PV counter is 5 and it comes here. Okay, and the value gets incremented by 1 which becomes 6 right 5 plus 1 6 now the new value of my pv counter is 6 okay and then it enters this xor path and here value of pv times is 5 okay 5 is greater than or equals to 6 is 5 greater than or equals to 6 here the condition becomes false right so it goes to end node now it's time to exit this XOR gateway and stop the execution okay now it goes here and and stops the execution of this process model cool I'm good to publish this and let's debug this start process for debugging okay see you can see this process and let's see how many times it has run for. 
okay if you just right click on this right to data store entity you can see the five instances why has it run for five times because we have set the value of pv times as five we wanted it to be run for five times that's why okay if i set the value of pv times as two it is gonna run for two times let me do that and let's debug this Control D. So by just right clicking on any of the activities, you will get to know the number of instances. Okay. So here you can see the two instances of this process model. Let me show you the data it has written to the table. Okay. I'll go to designer. You just have to click on this navigation and go to cloud database. search with the name of your table looping okay here you go you can see seven rows so when we started debugging it for the first time it ran for five times and then for the second time it ran for two times okay and here are the values of counter cool so that's pretty much for the day if you want more such videos, please like my video, share it as much as you can and yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, cheers. Bye-bye.